G'day. Welcome to Always Very Spicy. I'm glad you could join me. My name is Chris and today, Cyrodiil. Cyrodiil, that calamitous catastrophe of lag and lols. Cyrodiil, that open world zone where we send forth our best fighters to engage in awesome PvP combat. Cyrodiil, where today, Taral of Dawnstar shall set forth in Cyrodiil and he'll farm. Farm. He'll be farming. Today, Taral of Dawnstar shall run rampant in Cyrodiil. Indeed, not since before Patch 10, whatever that means, but it was a long time ago, as he ventured there. Firstly, he must don attire appropriate for Cyrodiil. A grand bejeweled crown of misrule will herald his intentions for attention. Oh, the excitement is palpable. The ponderous palpitations of palpable promises of pussy princesses await the ever-so-dashing and debonair Tarol of Dawnstar. And of course some classic white face, like a dollop of a chef's finest, freshest hand-whipped cream. Together with smooth riding leggings so that he won't chafe when riding roughshod on his fallen opponents. Oh, and a gorgeous corset with frilly embellishments that just cry out, come hither you old pussy princesses for Taral is boss. Perhaps he could have waxed his chest, underarms and nether regions, but this girl is in such a hurry to dominate the Dominion. It is so hard to find good men to bend to her will. Taral of Dawnstar checks that all is in order. Buffs? Check. His wooden staff he needs two hands to wield? Check. A fresh petty and manny from the cool Khajiits of Rimen? Check. Now he bravely surges forward. He feels the tensing hardness between his legs of his mount, pumping it to drive forward through the gates of Alter Doom. Ah, oh, yes, yes, yes. Finally released into the lush, open, forbidden territory of the Dominion. At last, Taral has arrived. This must be the climax of his conquest of Cyrodiil. A campaign commenced many years ago. So it is. Now he shall farm, he shall gather. But what? Gather? Farm? What, what can this mean? All can now be revealed. Ooh, shinies, sky shards. A trifling diversion, but a step sideways, not backwards. Taro never takes a step backwards. The sky shards must be gathered, but this was not his original intention. This was not what he originally meant by farming and gathering, oh no. To the water's edge, a drink for the mighty sorrel pony, a welcome respite. Ah, a rune stone. Yes, back in the day when Taro was barely able to shave, he'd sneak into this area to farm rune stones. Back then, rune stones were of middle level potency. As a newcomer, this was a sneaky way to gather as many as possible and level up his enchanting deconstruction really quickly with relatively overpowered rune stones.
Nowadays, people find runestones equal to their skills, no matter where they happen to be gathering them. Taro had heard that this sort of thing was never intended to have happened in Cyrodiil, particularly as being locked in Dominion territory gave them an unfair advantage. In reality, very few people knew that this could be done, so it's a kind of unintentional easter egg in Tamriel. Or a little secret favouritism for the Dominion, maybe? And as Taro worked at gathering runes, he reminisced of the time he arrived home from work to reluctantly inform his wife that he'd been sacked. And when his wife inquired why, he replied back that it was because he'd been caught with his dick in the cabbage slicer. Oh no, his shocked wife exclaimed, is your dick okay, Taro? Yes, Taro answered matter-of-factly. And tell me about the cabbage slicer, asked the wife. Oh, responded Taro, they sacked her too. Taro would relentlessly farm runestones for hours, from near the gates to as far as the river would carry him. But wait, there's another secret. A secret within a secret. This was no doubt intended as a real Easter egg. And here it is, the secret cave. But there's more to it than that, let's have a look inside. Rest in peace, fallen red guards of the Covenant. Your betrayal by your very own General Amshadal, who serves to this day at the Southern High Rock Gate, and who hypocritically talks of honour and faith, is a disgraceful act of treachery. Given half a chance, Tyrell of Dawnstar would surely avenge these fallen Covenant scouts. Rest in peace, fallen red guards of the Covenant. Your sad demise was not in vain. You forged a path for others to follow. Today, Tyrell of Dawnstar alone has taken your fallen banner, and in the name of the Ebonheart Pact, he continues the push behind the Dominion battlements. We are, for this singular purpose, united as foes. Farewell.
Harold paused. Memories came flooding back. It was right here, his favoured place to take a dump behind the lines. And when the job was done, he jumped down into the water to cleanse himself. Ah, yes, those were the dashing, debonair days of dumping on the Dominion. Onwards, Tarl, onwards, a shiny sky shard awaits you. These days, farming for rune stones behind the gates of Altadun is just a mere curiosity, an Easter egg. Reminder of times long since past. Just one quick circuit should suffice for today. Yes, another sky shard awaits. Time is of the essence before the gates close. Ah, how Tarl wished he was relaxing right now in the Warrior's Rest Tavern back at the southern Morrowind Gate. Telling tall tales and true of conquests past and of adventures to be had. Ah, he remembered the last time he was there. A drunken Nord had asked, when was the last time he had had sex? To which Tarl replied, 2010. Whoa, so long ago, replied the Nord. I don't think so, retorted Tahu. It's only just now gone 2100 hours. Despite the rigours of relentless gathering and unencumbered farming behind enemy lines, Taro took time to reflect on his wholesome family life back in Dawnstar. Ah yes, those romantic winter mornings snuggled together with his lady, intimate, personal, ecstatic times, so far removed from the harsh chill of the Dawnstar air. He chuckled at how they would send their young son out onto the balcony. <laughs> to report back the goings on in the market below while mummy and daddy engaged in those all too brief furtive special moments, entwined in a lover's tangled frenzy. Ah yes, there was that one time though. The blacksmith has another customer daddy, the son called out. That's nice son. Tarl breathlessly shouted in reply. The woodworker is fashioning a new bow. The lady selling apples has so many customers. Our neighbours across the street are having sex. Tarl's wife pushed his head away and breathlessly startled. Tarl looked up. What do you mean, son? Well... 
They've sent their son out onto the balcony too. Carol of Dawnstar once again sat atop his mighty sorrel pony, a symbol of all he has achieved so far in his conquest of the fertile land of Cyrodiil. With a kick he urged his mount forward, and as he felt the muscles tense between his loins he was reminded of the time he was in the bedroom of the Tarl Manor House in Dawnstar. His wife at the time was sitting astride him, squealing and bucking ecstatically like a cowgirl at a rodeo, and in walked their daughter. Quick as a flash, his wife said, Oh, don't worry about mummy and daddy, I was just trying to flatten daddy's tummy, he eats too much for dinner. And with that, the daughter wisely replied, Well, you're wasting your time, mummy, because when you go to the market, the servant just blows it up again. Tarl surged through the gate of Menom. Another victory, and with the next sky shard looming, Tarl recalled that old observation. Before sex, you help each other get undressed. After sex, you dress yourself. The moral of the story being, you get fucked in life and nobody's going to help you. Time now to decamp, to make for Rimmon where lately Tarl has been based. Ah yes, the Sugar Bowl Inn right near the Way Shrine. Tarl wondered if his good friend Heldrig would be there again. Just a mere week ago, Inn had shuffled Heldrig, head bowed, disconsolate. He promptly ordered a flagon of Merkmire Mead. Oh, tough day asked Tarl. Yeah. yeah, Heldrig replied. I just found out my youngest son is gay. And then the next night, in walked Heldrig again, and he ordered another flagon of that Merkmire gut rot. What happened, Heldrig? Tyrell inquired. Heldrig responded sadly. I just discovered my oldest son is gay. And you wouldn't believe it, the following evening, in walked Heldrig again, and yep, another flagon of that Merkmire mead. Brikey Heldrig, exclaimed Tara. Does anybody in your family prefer women? Dejectedly, Heldrig replied, Yeah, me wife. We say farewell now to Tarl of Dawnstar. Thank you, mate, for sharing your Cyrodiil conquests. And with that characteristic nonchalance, Tara waves a fond farewell from over his shoulder, shouting, Like! Subscribe and notify to see more of Tarl's adventures in Tamriel and for more in general of the Elder Scrolls Online. Fare thee well from Tarl and a fond farewell from the Spicy One, Chris of Always Very Spicy, bringing to you all that is spicy, be that the land of Cyrodiil or beyond. <laughs>